The Nintendo Switch has been out for just about half a decade at this point in time, which means all the dust has settled, all the hype is gone, and now we can objectively look at this console and try to ask the question, is it still worth buying a Switch in 2022? And the fact is, rather than give you a black and white pros and cons list, I'm going to give you considerations that can either work against you or for you, depending on what you're looking for from the Switch in itself. So without further ado, let's get started. Nintendo loves making games that are E, meaning for everyone. And I mean that beyond just the rating in itself. So if you've been a Nintendo fan in the past several decades, you know they've carefully created a very iconic culture. Some of their IPs really have this almost passive vibe to it where the game can be enjoyed by both children and adults alike. And often many parents with younger children prefer to get the Switch as the first video game console for their child. And for good reason, you have so many games that just have an enjoyable experience. And more often than not, those very parents end up playing those exact same games with their children, and even sometimes by themselves. That's something that is unique to Nintendo. You're not gonna find a four-year-old, hopefully, playing Call of Duty, but you'll definitely find adults in there. But again, Again, you know, it's kind of specific to age ranges. Nintendo does away with all that mindset. On the other side of that coin, one of the biggest limitations of the Nintendo Switch is the fact that it often lacks game diversity. So while, like I mentioned, there are plenty of established franchises like Mario, Zelda, Metroid Prime, and many, many, many others, you won't find games like the latest Assassin's Creed or Far Cry 6 or Elden Rings on the Switch. And whether that's because it's a technical limitation of what the console can produce or simply because developers and you know companies don't think it's worth porting it over for the Switch because it won't sell as much, that in itself is definitely a hindrance and you won't have access to a lot of third-party quality games that you would find with some of the other major players like Xbox, PlayStation, and PC. Objectively speaking, the Nintendo Switch is the cheapest current generation console you can buy with a $299 price tag for the standard version and a $350 price tag for the top of the line OLED version. It's a much cheaper console than most of the competition. On top of that, unlike the rest of the players, you literally get everything you need to start using the console right out of the box. You don't need a TV, you can get one, but you don't need it. You have a built-in screen, the controllers are there, all the accessories you need to get started are all presented to you. So it truly is a out of the box experience. Now, with that said, on the flip side, Nintendo has no quarrels about shamelessly ripping off its customers a post initial investment. The Joy-Con controllers here in Canada, for example, cost $100. And while technically they are two controllers, the fact is they're made of cheap plastic, they're really small, and the markup on them is undoubtedly ridiculously priced. Also, the fact that you can only get 32 or 64 gigabytes of storage, depending on which model you get, is a little ridiculous in 2022, even at that price point. The versatility is undoubtedly one of the biggest strengths of the Nintendo Switch. For you as a consumer, you basically get access to a full-fledged home console, but also a full-fledged portable gaming machine. And you can use it full-time or in partial mode on either one, and the switching process is so convenient. When you want to plug it to your TV, just put it into the dock and you're all set. And when you don't want to do that and just use it, literally remove it from the dock, you're all good to go. You can put it in your backpack, carry it on all day. It has a super sleek form factor, controllers that actually recharge while plugged in to the main console. It's a very practical design. And as a result of this, you, the consumer, truly benefits of having the best of both worlds. Now, of course, with that said, one thing I will say about the Switch is that because it's such a small console, it has technical limitations. The PlayStation 5, as massive as it might be, has a much more powerful hardware, for example, than the Switch does, which means you have better looking games with higher frame rates and higher resolutions. Of course, those are technical factors you may want to consider as well, but for someone who just wants versatility, nothing beats Switch, especially the way that they execute it. As I mentioned earlier, the Nintendo Switch comes in multiple variations. Now there is the Switch Lite, there's the standard Switch, and the OLED model. Since the Switch Lite is a portable gaming machine only, I'm going to remove it from this consideration, since if you want the full experience, you're gonna have to get the standard Switch or the OLED variant. They only have a $50 difference between $300 and $350, but I will say this much, if you have even the slightest bit of budget to spare, it's your first Switch, you should definitely consider going with the OLED version. Even though, technically, 
speaking, it's the same device. You do have a larger screen that's more colorful. It looks better, sharper, and more vivid in general. Past that, you also have some nice quality of life upgrades that improve the overall comfort of the device and a slightly improved docking station as well. Now, should you not have the funds or for whatever other reason you opt not to get that version of the Switch, the standard version is fantastic as well. Like I said, technically it's the same device, it runs the same games, it'll run them at the same settings, so you don't have to worry about any of that. You just have a slightly smaller screen and a slightly more dated design. The final factor, which is probably the most subjective one, is the lifespan of the console itself. So the Switch originally came out in 2017, around March, I believe, and it's five years old, which means we are now in the later half span of the console. This can be interpreted in one of two ways. Firstly, the Nintendo Switch may see potential price drops in the near future as more and more news starts formulating about what Nintendo's next generation console might be looking out, which really wouldn't be too far out. We may even see the next version in the next one to two years. And the second point, which you may have guessed, is that you may potentially be buying a dated console because if you get this today, there's a good chance in 12 months from now, or maybe like I said, two years from now, you're gonna see Nintendo's next console already released and out on the shelves. But despite that, the silver lining here is that whenever you buy a console in the later half of lifespan, it's had plenty of time to mature, lots of good games have come out for it, and even if you are waiting for Nintendo's next big thing, you'll have plenty of games to play in the meantime. Hopefully I've given you enough consideration to decide whether or not the Switch is the right console for you in 2022. Generally speaking, I own one. I think it's a fantastic tool. I think it's a great source of entertainment. The Switch has a lot going for it despite its flaws and limitations. But again, whether or not it's the right console for you, there's no right and wrong answer that's gonna come down to what you're looking for and what you ultimately need when you see it as a source of entertainment. If you guys enjoyed the content, make sure you hit that like button and sub to our channel. It genuinely helps us grow and means the world to me as well. Thank you so much for watching. Catch you in the next one.